This is Daru for DJ Lab, and today I want to show you a trick that's saved my life in production countless times. Basically, we're going to use Ableton Corpus to turn percussion loops into rhythmically complex bass lines that are always in key with your track. Uh, a lot of the times I have a super nice deep techno loop um, that's super heavy and that has is melodically interesting to me. But it's just like this, the dynamics are still missing, especially in techno where you've got like a 4-4 kick, offbeat hi-hat. I just want a little bit more dynamics and shake to uh, so it really translates on the dance floor. For example, with, uh, with this track I just built here, this little loop, I can show it to you. Yeah, so for me, it's uh, a super nice loop, you know, very deep, very heavy, nice melodies, but it's just got like this dynamic range missing that I, that I really want to introduce, especially in the lower frequencies, because so far it's only populated by the super heavy uh, sub bass and the kick. So the first thing we have to do is uh, create a new audio channel here and drop one instance of Ableton Corpus into it. Basically, it's a resonator and it works with something called physical modeling. Physical modeling means uh, that you approximate a physical object, like here, for example, a beam, and that beam is then excited with an input signal that you send into it and vibrates. And that's kind of how uh, Corpus creates the sound. And the nice thing about this is that you can drop down here in this menu and you have different physical models. And you can actually, since Ableton 11, you can also see what they look like here in this little uh, visual depiction. And you can choose different options here um, that will basically model whatever you see here. And uh, since we're going to use this to create a baseline, we're going to be focusing on pipe and tube modes. These are the two that work the best for bass in my experience. So we're just going to load here pipe modes. And the next thing we need is uh, an audio signal to actually excite the corpus. The best thing to use for me uh, is uh, percussion loops that are rhythmically textured, that have a lot of interesting movement in them. And also they should be, they should have a lot of mid frequencies because if the frequencies are too high, then the corpus won't re really be able to work with it that well. Uh, I just picked a random drum loop for this example. The only thing you have to pay attention for is that it's kind of varied in the frequency range so that the corpus will have different frequencies to work with. So let's listen to it. All right, and let's just uh, activate the vanilla um, or the default settings of Corpus and see what that gives us here in pipe mode. All right, so far, not that special. But uh, the great thing here is that you have a tune knob. It means we can actually tune the bass perfectly to uh, the root note of this track. And some, something I actually, some, something with a really simple solution that I struggled for a long time with is that if you just move this wheel here, you always get these not, not non-perfect values. So here we're like 20 CT below C2. The way to get around that is just to go to C minus one. So like absolute zero for the tune knob and then just use the arrow keys to go up and it will move in um, half notes. So as I think this track is in A sharp. So let's see what this gives us. All right, um, obviously this uh, was way too overpowered. And the reason for this is that we have kind of a powerful drum loop with long transients or um, long slices that we have to shorten because uh, now the decay is long on the drums and the decay is also long on the corpus. And if you stack those on top of each other, then you get a mess, you know? So basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into the drum loop and we're gonna shorten these transients. The way we can do that is here we've got the warp mode on beats and we can select how the transients uh, behave. And if we select this mode, the stop mode, and now it's at 100%, we can take it down to, let's say 25%, 
What basically happens is every time it hits a transient that you can see with these little markers here, it will only play this value of the note and then it will stop and it will start playing again at the next note. So it's still quite powerful and the reason is the decay time is very high. So let's pull that down as well. Now it's kind of a snappy bass that moves a lot. I'm just going to EQ it a little bit. Just to make sure it fits into the mix. Just taking out a little bit of the super powerful low, low frequencies from the loop. Okay, one more thing I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to lower the volume slightly because it's kind of uh, too powerful in the mix probably. So let's just take it down by say 3 dB. And now let's listen to what we have so far and how it fits in the mix. Okay, I'm just going to take out some of the high frequencies because there was a little bit of conflict there. And let's put this on solo see what we're doing. Okay, and in context. All right, I'm pretty happy already with what we've got so far. But I think we really want to exploit the dynamics that this creates. There's already a lot happening, but I think the corpus effect is best if it kind of fades in and out and really um, is almost like a field recording with artifacts, um, with a lot of things happening. And the best way to do that is by using LFOs. So first things first, I'm going to drop an LFO into the signal chain at the beginning, since it's a MIDI effect. And the two parameters that shape the sound of the corpus are here the decay, which delineates the length of the sound, and the radius, which I assume has something to do with the shape of um, the physical model that we're working with. And basically, the higher the radius, the higher the frequencies also will be that, that is, uh, are produced by corpus. And if we modulate that, we can get even more movement into the signal. So we're going to map the LFO to the decay. And if you click this, you get a drop down menu and you can also map the radius. So now we've got a lot of movement. Let's listen to it. So we want to limit a little bit how far this automation can move these, uh, these parameters. So we can very easily do this here in the LFO function just going to take the maximum value that the LFO reaches down to about like 50%, I would say. It's a pretty good value here. Maybe a little bit higher on the radius, a bit lower on the decay. And then the minimum value we're also going to adjust so the signal is never not audible. And with the radius, we can go maybe up to 20. Let's try these values. So this is a really key point because now it's actually going to kind of like a pumping feeling. Um, and this is really what, what, makes, what makes this technique work. For that little thing that pushes it over the top and makes it super unique and also very generative, we're just going to double this step and put in another LFO. And with this LFO, let's see, we have to go out of this menu and we are going to map the rate. So now you can see this LFO is actually mapping the speed that this LFO is oscillating at. Um, now obviously these parts here where the LFO moves very fast, it will sonically either sound terrible or it will have no effect. 
So here also we have to uh, reduce the values a little bit that it moves at. And it's, I love these kinds of things where you have a direct visual feedback of what you're doing. So you can either see here what's happening to these values, or you can see here how it's moving the parameters. So let's just play around with it a little bit and listen to it while we're doing it. Anytime you can introduce randomness without making it go completely crazy, um, your loop will be able to stay interesting longer and you will be able to make more minimalistic, more driving music with it. Okay, so what we've basically done here is create a signal chain that can transform almost any percussion loop into a baseline that would be in key with your track. And this is like a baseline factory now. You can throw anything in that you want to, maybe uh, watch out a little bit that it has, um, it's obviously rhythmically interesting and it also has a, a higher frequency range. So Corpus has more different frequencies to work with. What we can do now is we basically select our whole signal chain, group it. You can also save it as an audio effect track now. And now you've basically created your own instrument to transform any percussion to a bass line that will work with your track. And to prove this, let's just throw some... These are just Ableton stock samples, uh, not any special samples I prepared. Just gonna check some of these out. Let's just throw this in here. And what we always have to do, though, especially with these long sounds, is again reduce the transients. Otherwise, we have bass uh, bass apocalypse. So let's take it down to say twenty percent, and let's check out what we have here. Let's solo it first. Today we've created a simple signal chain that you can throw basically any percussion loop into and it will generate interesting rhythmically complex basses that are in key with your track. Whether you're just out of ideas or you need uh, a little bit more dynamics in a static track, this is a quick and easy way I've been using for years to just generate ideas. This has been Dahu for DJ Lab and please do try this at home.